pressure on parade Healthy shot, nerves afraid Where do doctors go to get first aid? This must be the place There's a therapeutic atmosphere This must be the place I feel like my old self in here Coming in, I felt a grin Beginning on my face The recovery room. I got it. Hello, Kay and Steve's recovery room. No, I'm sorry, we don't deliver. Sure we do. Babies. Oh. Large intestines, 25 points. Liver, 50 points. Gallbladder, 100 points. Let's eat. You know, it's absolutely shameful. The poor man weighs 300 pounds, and his family insists on bringing pizza in every time they visit. Why don't you tell them not to bring it? Well, I would, but it's real good pizza. <laughs> Hello, Kay and Steve's recovery room. Oh, hi, Mrs. Griffin. Sure. Steve, it's your mother. My mother? <laughs> Thanks, Kay. Hi, Mom. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, it had to happen someday. That's all right, Ma. Calm down. It'll be all right. You'll see. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You try to get a good night's sleep. <sighs> My grandmother. Oh, Steve, I'm sorry. She died? Worse. Worse? She just found out that I gave up my residency at the hospital. You mean you never told her? I was afraid to. Why? You know my father was a doctor. Yeah. Well, his father was a doctor. All my cousins are doctors. Our mailman is a doctor. Funny. Call your grandmother and explain to her what happened. Oh, no. With my grandmother, there's no explaining. There's listening, there's agreeing, there's groveling, and there's running for your life. Steve, call her. Well, I will. Eventually. I know you. You always put things off. Now, let's talk about this later. And you always avoid confrontations. <laughs> attention. Your attention, please. All right. Stand back. <laughs> thank you, thank you. The night is young, and I am so beautiful. The doctors get applause. Yeah, and what do the nurses get? Pizza. Hi, guys. Hey, take a look at these hands, Steve. 32 straight hours, and they're still steady as a rock. Bring him the Nobel Prize, and I'll have coffee. Industrial strength. Make that a bacon burger stat. Where's Milt? Milt? Ha! He's still at the hospital trying to pull himself together. Dr. Thurman chewed him out again. What happened? Oh, poor guy. He was giving a patient an injection, and he looked up and saw Thurman standing in the doorway glaring at him. So Milt panicked and dropped the syringe. So then he bent down to pick it up and knocked the IV into the next patient's lunch. Nearly scared her to death. They're still scraping tapioca off the ceiling. <laughs> you should have been there, Steve. Thurman went berserk. He called Milt an incompetent, thumbless klutz with the coordination of an adult carrot. <laughs> I love Thurman. The man has a way with words. Uh-oh. Hi, Milt. Hi, Steve. What can I get you? Nothing. Large or small? Small be fine. That was a joke, Milt. I know. <laughs> Come on. You gotta forget about Thurman, Milt. He's a sadistic jerk. He's a very unhappy person, Milt. You're a happy person. He resents it. I'm not a happy person. 
Well, he'll be glad to hear that. <laughs> you got a little uh, tapioca there, Milt. <laughs> Steve, did you call your grandmother? Later. Burger takes bacon. Okay. Let's have it all. What else didn't you tell her? That I used the money that my grandfather left me to buy my half of this place. May I speak as an ex-nurse? Go ahead. Let's have it. I've always found it less painful to pull the bandage off as fast as you can. See, now I subscribe to the other school. If you wait long enough, maybe it'll fall off. <laughs> there you go. Oh, your burger's working. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Good evening. Hi. Welcome to Paradise. I am your host, Monsieur Steve. I'm a Sagittarius, unmarried. I like to play tennis, go swimming, and dry myself off. <laughs> Do you uh, work at the hospital? No. Well, I always pass here on my way home. I was curious, so I thought I'd stop in and... And meet a doctor. Well, boy, are you in luck. I am? Stephen Griffin, MD, at your service. You're a doctor? Why are you waiting on tables? Because I've hung up my stethoscope. To become a waiter? Well, no, actually, I'm the co-owner. That's my partner behind the bar. She used to be a nurse. But uh, enough about her. Let's talk about me. <laughs> There is an MWD if I've ever seen one. What's an MWD? A me want doctor. <laughs> they flock to this place looking for doctors to marry. Can an RN be an MWD? <laughs> no, not initially. <laughs> Come off it, Russell. All right, now just pay attention. In primitive societies, women all wanted uh, the chief or the guy with the biggest club because he was the one who held the power of life and death over the rest of the tribe. But in our modern day society, that power is held by doctors. So it's only natural for women to desire us. You know, Russell, you could be the first human being ever to die of an overdose of yourself. Yeah, well, that's a chance I'm willing to take. Oh, I'm sorry. Nice, Bill. You're on a roll, babe. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. How come you're the only one in here who ever acknowledges my existence? To be honest, I need your business. <laughs> Such a kidder. <laughs> Don't they know that I'm a human being? I have feelings. I'm sure you have many feelings, Jerry. I'm an administrator. I can't work miracles. This is a city hospital. I've got no money and I've got no staff. Well, you got to understand, Jerry. When you ask the doctors to supply their own liquid soap, they're bound to turn on you. If they can't afford soap, they shouldn't be doctors. Well, look at the bright side, Jer. By being the only person that everyone is allowed to hate, you perform a very valuable emotional service to the staff of the hospital. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Hating you is a positive catharsis for everyone. You're just too close to it to be objective. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that with me, Steve. The usual, Jer? Yes, but actually tonight, I'd rather just sit here and drink in the ecstasy of your beauty. Please, Jerry, let's not go through this again. Okay. I know I'm just another guy with a silver-gray metallic BMW 733i, but... <laughs> On that magical night, in those few short hours we spent in the dark, laughing, crying. Jerry, we went to the movies. <laughs> Let's do it again. Maybe this time we can sit together. I don't think so. Kay, I'm lonely. You're lonely. Why don't we lie down someplace and talk about it? I'm not that lonely, Jer. <laughs> How's it going, Milt? Rotten. Thurman's got me so crazy, I, I can't do anything right anymore. Don't let him get to you, Milt. Look, every once in a while, Thurman picks a first-year resident to crucify. Hang in there. You'll be fine. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is it? What's the matter? My beeper. I lost my beeper. <laughs> it's not funny, Russ. <gasps> oh, oh, I'm so oh, sorry. No, it's okay. No, both are broken. You sure? Positive. Mill, it's Dr. Thurman. Oh, no. 
Says he's been paging you for half an hour. Oh, my God. He wants to see you right away. That's it. It's all over. I'm finished. It's back to Milwaukee for me. Wait, Milt. Look, don't take it so hard. We've all had our run-ins with Thurman. It's part of the price we pay for wanting to be doctors. Look, it's not like you lost a patient or you left a sponge in someone. You lost your beeper. Big deal. He can't kick you out of the hospital for that. He can't? No way, big guy. Not a chance. But if he does, can I have your apartment? <laughs> Cute, Russell. It happens to be a great apartment. <laughs> Poor Milt. He'll be okay. He was a hockey player in college. The man thrives on punishments. <laughs> no, I remember once uh, an intramural game. Call your grandmother. Oh. Look, it's bad enough you didn't tell her, but now she knows you didn't tell her. So not only didn't you tell her, but you didn't tell her you didn't tell her, even after somebody else told her you didn't tell her. <laughs> so you think I should tell her? I don't want to get involved. <laughs> No answer. My grandmother must have gone to bed. Guess again. <laughs> Grandma! <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> How did you get here? I took a taxi. All the way from Nyack? $53.85. Plus a $2 tip. <laughs> Two bucks? If he didn't like it, he can go back to Russia. Well, Grandma, this is the place. What do you think? Well, they told me it was a restaurant. It's nothing but a saloon. No, we serve food. So does the zoo. <laughs> is this the sex nurse? Uh, ex-nurse, Grandma. <laughs> this is my partner, Kay Brenner. How do you do, Mrs. Griffin? Aren't you a little old for my grandson? Grandma. Our relationship is strictly business. Kay. Oh, I'm familiar with the business. Grandma. What business are you referring to? Kay. The monkey business. <laughs> Grandma, Kay had nothing to do with my decision to leave medicine. You keep out of this. Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but I knew you would react like this. Like what? Like you did when Belinda decided to become a Buddhist. Belinda? My sister, the one who, according to you, doesn't exist anymore. She's a Buddhist. She left the material plane. You disowned her. Well, I'm not going to do that to you. Well, I appreciate that, Grandma. You I'm suing. <laughs> Grandma, how can you sue me? Easy. I just pick up the phone, I call my lawyer, I tell him that you used the money your grandfather left you for your education to buy a saloon. But I'm your grandson. Maybe so. But I think your grandfather would want me to sue. <laughs> and I'm absolutely positive that my lawyer will. It's not just a saloon, it's a restaurant. Here, would you like something to eat? An ulcer burger? <laughs> Dr. Reuben Reuben. <laughs> Chicken salad a la Heimlich? That's with bones. <laughs> okay, Grandma. This place may not seem like much to you, but it serves a very valuable purpose. It's a place where all the people who work in the hospital can come to relax. You are supposed to be over at the hospital serving humanity, not here in some gin mill slinging drinks. Grandma, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. I was wrong. I don't want to hear about it. I'm sorry you're upset, but at least hear my side. I'll have the shrimp cocktail. Yes, Grandma. What's the prognosis? Unstable and fading fast. Nina. <laughs> we had a thing going. Maybe that thing is still there. Maybe we can spank its bottom and bring it back to life. Put a diaper on it, Jerry. Take a look at this, Dr. Young. 
32 hours without sleep and not a trim. That's amazing, Russell. Then again, could be rigor mortis. Steve, you want me to talk to her? It wouldn't help. There's just no getting through to her. Well, let me try. After 20 years of sick old ladies, a healthy one should be a snap. <laughs> Here's your shrimp. Thank you. Can I get you some oyster crackers? No. Tabasco sauce? No. Fluff your pillow? <laughs> Can we talk? It's your booth. Mrs. Griffin, I'm not a meddler. What's happening here is strictly between you and Steve. But I want you to know I have not seduced your grandson professionally, personally, or otherwise. Good. When Steve was a first-year resident, we became friends. I told him I wanted to give up nursing, own a business, be my own boss. Then this place came up for sale. When Steve heard I was looking for a partner, he jumped at the chance. What else did he jump at? <laughs> Mrs. Griffin, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. My grandson was on his way to being a wonderful doctor. Your grandson was on his way to being a miserable doctor. I don't mean a miserable doctor. He was an okay doctor, nothing special. But he was miserable emotionally. Mrs. Brenner. Miss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My family has always held the very highest standards. My grandson is supposed to be a doctor, not a bar owner. Mrs. Griffin, I happen to care very much for your grandson, and not in the way you think. What Steve chooses to do with his life is his decision. And another thing, I've never had children, but if I ever do, I'll certainly try to put their happiness before my high standards. Enjoy your shrimp. How did it go? I warmed her up for you. Go get her. <laughs> you know, that stuff is destroying your liver. It is? Yeah, but don't worry, I'm a doctor. Let's have a look. Stick out your tongue and say, ah, oh, Russell. How's the shrimp cocktail, Grandma? Unfit for human consumption. Shall I take it back? I'm not finished. But if you don't like it... It's not a matter of liking. I finish what I start. Excuse me, Grandma. Bill. What happened with Thurman? He said if I was really interested in saving lives, I should get out of medicine. <laughs> he said that? Actually, he screamed it. I'm quitting, Steve. I can't take it. I'll go to work for my father. Oh, good thinking, Milt. Yeah, obviously, losing your beeper was God's little way of telling you to go into the family catering business. I make, I make too many mistakes. All first-year residents make mistakes. <laughs> Not like me. Waiter. In a minute, Grandma. You've been talking about going into medicine ever since I've known you. You're going to give that up to spend your life counting the cherries and fruit cups? I'm not cutting it, Steve. I don't have what it takes. You're just going through a crisis in confidence. You have to stick it out. You're a good doctor, Milt. I don't know, Steve. All right, Milt. Back in school, on the hockey team, what position did you always play? Goalie. Well, there you go. <laughs> huh? You were a goalie, Milt. And your only job was to protect that goal. And now that goal is your career. Protect it. How? Thurman's always in my face. You have to forget about Thurman, Milt. Waiter. In a minute. He's just a loudmouth hot dog on the other team. And he's making you look bad. He's psyching you out. You're not a klutz. No? You're a goalie. And if you don't stop fumbling around and feeling sorry for yourself, I am personally going to come out onto the ice and kick your butt. You got that? Yeah. Now remember, you're not a klutz. I am not a klutz. Can I have a beer? Sure. Just try not to spill. <laughs> so, after a brief flirtation with emergency medicine, I became infatuated with gastroenterology. All that warm, 
wonderful goo flowing through our system. Can I, uh, buy you a bowl of chili? Jack. It's on the house, Grandma. I ate it, I'll pay for it. You're my grandmother, you don't pay. If you were a doctor, I'd take your advice. <laughs> I'm sorry you feel that way, Grandma. But you have to understand how unhappy I was as a doctor. I was angry all the time. I even began to resent my patients for being sick. I started taking it out on the nurses. That's what the nurses are there for. <laughs> Grandma, you are just going to have to accept the fact that I have quit medicine. Now, maybe that makes me selfish. Maybe I am a quitter. Maybe I'm the most pathetic excuse for a grandson who has ever lived. But I really love this place. And I also love the people who come here. And I love you too, Grandma. I'm sorry you're so disappointed in me, but this is my life, and this is what I want to do. Well, yeah. yeah. oh, you finally had the guts to tell me. He told his mother. He told his father. Did he tell me? No. <laughs> Grandma, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? I'll work on it. Give me a kiss. Oh. <laughs> so does this mean you're not suing me? We'll discuss it at dinner on Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Just him. <laughs> Get me a cab. It was nice meeting you, Miss Brenner. Nice meeting you, Mrs. Griffin. The shrimp were delicious. It's too bad there were so few of them. I got one, Grandma. You know, Grandma, as long as you've forgiven me, maybe you could consider forgiving Belinda for becoming a Buddhist? We'll discuss that, too, at my funeral. <laughs> you know, personally, I think in this fast-paced world we're living in, the sponge bath has become a lost art. Well, what happened here? Well, he was talking away about gastro something or other. And then he put his head down and fell asleep. He's a lightweight. <laughs> what you need is a real doctor. Milt. Barbara, this is a friend of mine, Dr. Milton Sherman. We bumped into each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, Milt lives in the neighborhood, too. Maybe he could walk you home. It's kind of late, and he needs the protection. <laughs> Okay. Mel, let me see you for a second. Yeah. Excuse me. Here, hang on to this for me, would you? Steve, it's your beeper. I don't need it anymore. You keep it. Thanks, Steve. You are really a friend. This is the greatest thing anyone has ever done for me. Come on, Mel, it's just a beeper. No, no, not the beeper. <laughs> well, I'm ready. You'll never guess what my grandmother said. What? She wants me to bring you along for dinner on Sunday. Well, she's not such a toughie after all. Well, that's really very sweet of her. No, it isn't. She wants to go over our books. <laughs> treatment for victims of osteoporosis and Pat Collins looked at the latest in special effects for the movies tomorrow on the CBS Morning News. Now stay tuned for the love story of all time, a king, a queen, and a knight, torn apart by passion but bound forever by the sword. Nigel Terry and Nicole Williamson star in Excalibur. Next.